Make It Right, the manufacturing podcast. Welcome to the Make It Right podcast. I'm Janet Eastman, and this week on the show, we continue our conversation with Veni Karana, who is a global operations and supply chain leader and also an expert in vendor collaboration and compliance. He is the VP of Global Operations at Low Carb Canada. In our previous conversation, we were talking about supply chain, and in today's conversation, we are talking about the digitization of the supply chain and its benefits. Here's my conversation with Vineet. You're very keen on digitization within the supply chain. So explain, give us a visual on what that means to you and what it can mean for everyone within that supply chain. So digitization, um, you know, if I have to, to summarize digitization, I think it's it's more to do with the visibility in the supply chain. Um, like supply if 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 i look at end to end you know i mean there are um if you see from right from your order to delivery how do we how do we how can we track every step in a in a more visible f- fashion and and using technology you know which we call it as digitization uh, i think is is the right way to say it i mean i have seen manufacturers and retail both side um there are uh, there are areas where I think uh, generally we are good at, and there are areas where we are not good at. It's very hard to have a uh, seamless end-to-end experience. Uh, some, for example, you know, uh, supplier or retailer are good at inventory, you know, visibility. Some are good at the customer visibility side. Some are good as they are, are good at the back end, you know, uh, whether the product was delivered on time to your facility or not. Um, but really, I think with all these new technologies and uh, digitization coming up, if we can have that end-to-end connection and create that seamless visibility, that's where uh, you know uh, I think the the biggest challenge lies, mm-hmm. uh, and that's where I think the digitization is going to play a big role, and it it is going to help us reduce the cost as well for sure because right now there's a lot of waste across the supply chain which normally we don't see. Uh, once we have uh, visibility, we should be able to identify, you know, where where we are doing good and where we are not doing so good. And then how can we reduce some of those fats or waste from the system uh, and be better at, uh, better at, you know, managing the cost and consistency. And it can be even, you know, I think digitization can play even a bigger role for quality and service as well. Hmm. So, if I'm a big company and I decide that, yep, it's time to implement a digital supply chain structure, what do I need from all the players on my team? Uh, one thing is the alignment. You know, I mean, everyone has a different perspective on digitization and different expectations. Um, so how do you get everyone aligned? And then uh, from there, an alignment is not just about saying, yeah, let's do digitization. It's it's to do with the prioritization as well. And, and I mean, I've worked, I uh, had the opportunity and to work, you know, when I was with Walmart on uh, a little bit on this. So, and, and that's where I think uh, most of the effort went in terms of planning. Uh, what, how can, first of all, identifying technology help? So using the help of consultants and third parties and our own expertise. And then prioritizing, you know, which which area we want to focus first. Where where are the you know uh, biggest buck for the bank, you know, and then uh, and then going behind those areas while still building the infrastructure for future. So it's like building a house. You build the foundation first. Like for example, if you don't know where your PO is, it's no point. You know, you automate all your uh, warehouses and transportation while the basics are not there. Mm-hmm. So, so it's it's tracking the inventory is the first step uh, across the across the supply chain. I think that's a good starting point as well because if you can track your inventory at every point of supply chain, you are in a great spot, which is easier said than done. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because as if you're a small manufacturer or retailer, probably it's easier. But if you are the size of Walmart or Target or Kroger, then it's tough. What does it cost to do this? I mean, like this is. A- Invention or investment, rather, to to implement a digital supply chain structure, I would think. But the cost 
benefit has to be there at the end, right? Um, again, it, it, it is one of the biggest success factors. So yes, absolutely, it should. If you are going to spend millions or billions these days on this technology, and, and uh, I won't name a retailer, but I know there is a retailer who has a budget of uh, more than a billion in these type of stuff. Mm -hmm then obviously you want to see the benefit. But I think the benefit is not just the cost. The benefit is in terms of services is a huge benefit of, of this digitization. You know, if you can, uh, and service is not just delivering on time, it's understanding your customers, your consumers, uh, you know, better as well, so that you can change your, you can cater to the demand um, and then adjust your supply chain accordingly, which ultimately helps you to reduce costs. So I think cost is more of a lagging indicator to me. The leading indicator of this should be the the service. Um, if we can get that better, and that obviously then would help us to manage our supply chain better, which would then help us to get the cost better. I suppose when people are looking at something, I mean, if they really like the service that somebody provides, an organization, a company, a business provides, if something is a little bit more cost, but the service is there, then they are willing to pay that extra cost. Because, I mean, up until you said it, I was like, no, 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 people are more interested in cost. But no, if the service is terrible, but the cost is good, half the time you're not going to want to do business with a place that provides terrible service. That's absolutely true, and like I said, there is the, the people, you know, and especially the the millennials, you know, they, I guess, they want a service same day, you know, the convenience of shopping and you know getting the product when you need it without actually going to the to the different places, and and if you think where the trend, if you see where the trend is going, uh, the service is is becoming more and more important, and that's where you know see. You know, retailers like Amazon and others spending a lot of time in delivering same day or next day, you know, or maybe in hours these days because mm -hmm. they know that's where the play is. And you can play a little bit with the cost. And when I'm saying it doesn't mean that, you know, if I want my product same day, I'm ready to pay double the price. But at the same time, I think if it's a little bit higher, then consumers are willing to pay that extra if they can get a huge service level improvement. So do you think that's one of the, the key success factors that um, are important right now to achieve that operational excellence in this fast moving world? It is that that just that little bit better service that that people are going to be willing to actually pay that little bit extra for. I think so. I think if a, if a quality is assumed, let's quality and consistency is there for everyone. And, you know, then I think people are caring more or are, are actually are ready to pay a little bit extra for the better service. Mm -hmm. Are there other key success factors that you see? The other one I would say is the, you know, the, um, the reverse logistics as well as, you know, we are going more and more towards this online Then people still want that convenience of if they don't like something, then they can, you know, return it. The whole convenience, the whole experience, you know, of not just buying the product, but raising your voice and returning it if it's not meeting your expectations. And that's all again part of service, I think. Uh, so, or, or a customer experience probably is a better term. Yeah. Okay. You get what you want, but if you don't like it, you know, you have the ease of giving it back. I don't know, doesn't make sense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think the, the whole world has changed. The whole shopping experience has changed. Um, the consumer wants what they want and they want it now. And like you said, they're willing to pay a little bit more, but not a lot more for it. And the whole thing is just evolving constantly. And honestly, Vanita, I don't know how guys like you keep up with it and, and stay on top of it, but I'm sure glad you do. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's. I guess it's. We learn from from all sides, you know. Customers are consumers, especially are teaching a lot to the to the retailers and to the to people like us eventually. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the technology and has has a big role to play. It's it's hard to keep up with, to be honest, you know. And um, I know um, we all have have probably heard about artificial intelligence. We all believe that this is going to play a big role. Um, not just in supply chain, but in any area of, you know, our, 
I guess life. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so we just have to to be tuned into it, and and uh, and I guess people like you are helping a lot as well. You know, by talking to experts in different areas and taking it to the to the to the audience. So these are all you know good examples of how we can all keep up uh, to this. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, the one thing uh, hosting this podcast that I have learned is that. It's very, very challenging out there in the manufacturing industry. And honestly, for the average consumer, nobody really thinks about that. You just know whether you like your product or whether you don't, or if there's a flaw in it or whether there isn't. And, you know, I have a a great deal of respect for everybody in the manufacturing industry now because my eyes have been really opened up wide as to how hard this business is. And, um, you know, you guys just keep pushing forward and trying to keep it, uh, getting it right for us. And uh, we certainly do appreciate that. So, yeah, good luck. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, you know, I think the, the, the other thing we are learning a lot from, from not, not now, but I think this has been the, the pattern that we learn a lot from consumers is in terms of innovation, because the boundaries are getting pushed, you know, and then trying different things and not just different products, but different way of getting products. Uh, different way of experiencing the products, you know, and different way of shopping. So, so innovation is is the key, has been the key, and I think will become even more important. Not just from product innovation, but like I said, from from uh, from a holistic uh, view. Mm-hmm. Well, Vanit, good luck out there, and uh, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us. And I hope we'll have a chance to speak again. Um, and we'll be uh, keeping an eye on how things go with Low Carb Canada, where you are now VP of Global Operations. Yeah, I look forward. Thanks, thanks for actually you know reaching out and and uh, giving the opportunity to share my views, um, and uh, and look forward to hearing more from you and uh, such podcast. Yeah, great. Thank you, Vanit. Have a great day. That's our show for today. Thanks very much for listening. We'll see you again next time on the Make It Right podcast.